मैम विल बी सॉरी Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, you may not know uh, Vandana's husband is a very good photographer and a photography expert and teacher. His name is Navneet Saxena. Good friends. Yes. Both of them. So we we have to meet then. I'm a I'm a big student of photography and I would love to catch up with him. Definitely. In no. fact, we should request him to be part of our guru series. We make we'll yes. separately talk about that. You can see some pictures behind Vandana. Yes. Yes. Those are. Yeah. 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 So, ma'am, uh, we will be starting in thirty uh, seconds. Uh, the format is going to be Vivek will speak for thirty to thirty-five minutes, and I'll come in a couple of times in between. Uh, before we start, we'll request you to uh, please introduce the subject to your teachers, and uh, then uh, we'll just mute ourselves. Uh, Vivek will speak, and then we'll uh, definitely love a lot of Q and A from teachers. So we've not done this thirty times, and the more the te- the more the questions the more fun it gets so that's going to be my request to all the teachers so if we allow me can we start now yes we can so good morning everyone good morning teachers uh, good morning vandana ma'am good morning vivek it's my honor and privilege to welcome you to ideas at work our webinar series from shulini university kasoli hills uh, this is our 30th episode and we've now spoken to Uh, 29 different schools across the country the whole idea behind this uh, series of webinars is to connect each other inspire each other so that we can then inspire our students i'm honored to have vivek atre with us who's going to be hosting the session today uh, vivek is a dear friend and ex ias officer as you know tedx speaker motivational speaker and for me also a very dear friend and uh, an advisor and professor at shulini university As a quick background, I am the founder and pro vice chancellor of Shulini University. I am a B.Tech from IIT Kanpur, mm-hmm. an M.B.A. from Bajaj, and then spent around 20 plus years in the industry. Uh, MNCs like McKinsey and Company, where I was a partner. Seven different countries, 25 different cities, and then finally the teaching bug hit me. And 2013, I got uh, to teaching full time, uh, and I now, in my introduction, claim that I am a very proud teacher. So I think with that introduction, I'm going to introduce. Uh, I'm going to request Vandana Ma'am to please uh, introduce the topic, and we'll then hand it over to Vivek for the beautiful and inspirational talk. Over to you, Vandana Ma'am. So good morning, uh, teachers. Good morning, Vivek. Good morning, Atul. And thank you very much for this thirtieth uh, episode of the topic that you are going to be talking about. Number three is a favorite and very very. lucky for us so we hope to take back um, very good learning from here which is the need of the r uh, teachers today's topic is emotional success emotional intelligence is the key to success and uh, i think uh, nobody better than vivek atre uh, who can address this because uh, in addition to knowing him as an ex ias officer ted is tedx speaker a writer is also a very dear friend and a motivational speaker we look forward to this interaction which is long overdue and uh, just last night i was watching this film called uh, a beautiful day in the neighborhood so they, i i cried many times during the movie it's it's a favorite thing for me to do when i'm moved by something which is related to emotions there are tears of joy i rarely cry, cry from sadness i always cry because i'm very happy so this movie is uh, something i recommend for all of us to watch because mm-hmm. the there's a show that uh, tom hanks mr rogers he's running and he says i'm doing i'm only helping children address their real emotions at the right time and in the education sector doing that is very important especially in view of the current situation because uh, we have to address uh, e- education from the point of view of the bloom's taxonomy and their emotions play uh, uh, not the sorry not the bloom's tex- taxonomy but the maslow's law of hierarchy so intellect will follow once the emotions are safe secure and that's bound to happen if the emotions are addressed at the right time and the right people to address emotions is teachers just to give you a brief introduction in tribune school 
we have uh, 620 children and we have 1440 parents who are also our students and beyond that we have 1440 grandparents who are also our students so we like to address emotions of the entire community together so without much uh, ado and talking more about it uh, let's proceed with this and we are looking forward to listening from you uh, over to you vivek ji thank you Thank you, uh, Atul and uh, Vandana, ma'am, for this uh, welcome and introduction. Uh, Atul Khosla has uh, launched this series by Shulini University with various schools in North India. And uh, about six or seven topics have been selected. Uh, the schools get to select the exact topic. And you have selected a very good topic of emotional intelligence for success. And thank you for the introduction, Vandana, because that film, uh, Beautiful Day, I've watched it with my family. And it is a lovely film with Tom Hanks. Uh, I also would recommend, uh, and I sent it to Atul Khosla last night, I think, a very good video that Barack Obama and Mrs. Obama have brought out just a few days ago on uh, the power of words and the love for words. And the, uh, both of them sitting together and reading from that book, uh, just sheer joy to watch them. And uh, that also is, I'll try and send it to you, something that the teachers can see. So just coming to the topic, firstly, saying that Shulini University is very dear to my heart. I have been um, visiting professor and advisor to them for the last couple of years. Atul is a dear friend. And uh, this uh, very laudable uh, endeavor to reach out to schools and principals and teachers uh, at this time is really, really uh, close to our hearts. And we're uh, having a lot of fun on, along the way, meeting uh, people, e-meeting people uh, like this. So I would expect and request at the end, you can have a few questions, uh, which I will be very happy to take your teachers. I already see that on Zoom, there are more than 40 of them and maybe some more people are joining on YouTube. So uh, coming to the topic itself, emotional intelligence is uh, slightly higher than intelligence. I feel in the hierarchy of qualities that human beings can uh, display. And uh, all of us are uh, imperfect because we are human beings. Sorry to call you imperfect, but uh, no human being can claim to be 100% perfect in terms of emotional control, in terms of his or her speech, in terms of his or her conduct, or even uh, various other things, uh, character, etc., where we are totally perfect, it doesn't exist, that scenario. So we are uh, works in progress, incomplete, in imperfect. Uh, having said that, we also have a lot of qualities and each person, uh, I believe Indians have a lot of uh, edge over a lot of countries because India has a lot of grounding in culture and uh, tradition and family values. So I think that uh, we have an edge over many, many, many uh, nations or societies in terms of uh, being emotionally mature in to the extent that we understand uh, the world and its uh, culture and its uh, ways a little better. So I feel that uh, as individuals, we are at a certain level and we can improve to a certain uh, better level if we work on ourselves. So emotional intelligence is uh, defined by Daniel Goldman. He was the founder. We won't get into too many technical details. Let's uh, suffice it to say that uh, Daniel Goldman basically says that firstly, self-awareness and then empathy for others. And I would add that emotional intelligence is the ability to balance, uh, uh, to handle people and situations in a calm and balanced manner. So if you are able to handle people and situations in a calm and balanced manner, then you'll be more successful because the way you conduct yourself in such situations which are diverse and with people who are from diverse backgrounds is really what matters. And people may be uh, very good at mathematics or physics or history or geography and teachers, especially this applies to, but suddenly if you are elevated to a, let's say administrative role or you are positioned in an administrative role and you have to deal with parents or you have to deal with different uh, kinds of backgrounds, then your emotional intelligence comes into play even more. So the first example I'd like to give you is that uh, supposing uh, you are, uh, uh, heading a team of three people 
and uh, you are in charge of that team of teachers let's say or uh, group and though out of the three one is a very regular kind of person uh, who is balanced and largely uh, well proportioned in his uh, reactions one is a very aggressive kind of individual who is a go getter and uh, very high flying let's say uh, uh, thinks a little too much of himself and there is a lady who is a little shy very efficient very hard working very uh, but a little introvertish and a little meek so there are these three individuals in your team each of them is different uh, we should actually uh, understand them first before we are able to get along with them and take work out of them or make them perform at their best the high flying individual we need to slightly uh, control with firmness perhaps his or his temperament if he is uh, boasting about things in every meeting or he is uh, in a hurry to get things done or he is even aggressive in his demeanor uh, typically such people are also a little disorganized but he may be organized also we never know so uh, he he needs to be a little firmly dealt with so uh, in front of others it may not be a good idea but privately sometime you can tell him that see you are a little uh, too much for the others to handle so just tone down your behavior a little quietly the leader has to tell this person that uh, it is better for you to you know focus on your work a little more and speak a little less in the meetings let others speak have empathy for them and just by gently counseling this person perhaps he becomes a little more aware of his personality the balanced person in the middle is someone you don't really need to worry about because he knows when to uh, become a little more uh, dynamic and when to remain calm in his work and he is the one who will help you the most but the third one the lady who is a little meek it could be a lady or it could be a gent if the first one could have been a lady or a gent that's not the point the point is that this third one needs a little encouragement needs needs understanding that this lady needs to be bolster needs to be supported needs to be uh, you know her uh, emotions her uh, work her conduct everything needs to be of a more uh, of a higher level of energy so perhaps she needs encouragement constant backing and because she is so good and diligent at her work she doesn't need to be told about that she needs to be given the assurance that you are with her so the leadership has to give her that assurance if you say something to her which is harsh even once and uh, then she will not be able to sleep at night and she will think about you and you means any leader any teacher in fact uh, it could be the students we are talking about there could be students in your class who are like this 40 of them let's say out of 40 of them they will be a few extremes a few extremes on this side and a few extremes on that side and the rest of them will be uh, normal kids who are you know usual uh, some may be kids with learning abilities different learning abilities special needs and of course they have to be also dealt with so teachers in a classroom also have to see what kinds of uh, uh, backgrounds children have what should be said and what should not be said uh, is there something about a particular community that we said out of you know just out of uh, without caring we can't say something about a particular community if that uh, community is represented or even not represented jokes about a particular section of society uh, perhaps have to be avoided sometimes uh, gentlemen make the mistake as teachers of uh, cracking boys jokes maybe not boys jokes but a little uh, making the girls a little uncomfortable so we have to see our situation we have to see who we are talking to and what kinds of people are there so i often say that you can behave uh, just like uh, freely and without inhibitions when you are with your friends close friends you can be bindas and you can be like you were in college or wherever you were and with them and uh, just you know your speech your conduct your behavior is just cool and you are your own uh, whatever you are but when you are with your boss you will behave differently when you are with a junior you behave differently your mother in law is present you will not say certain things and uh, your children are present you will not say certain things uh, your spouse is uh, hopefully your friend so you can be yourself with your spouse so these are the basic uh, points of emotional intelligence 
where you have to understand that society is full of different kinds of people. We have to conduct ourselves in a manner that is exemplary, that is according to the situation, that is basically uh, dependent on who is listening to us at that time and what we should be like. Of course, leadership means or teachers also have to conduct themselves at all times, like as if they are examples for students and others, parents also. So parents also look up to teacher through their students because the students typically go and praise their teachers at uh, school, uh, mostly. So they will say that, you know, my ma'am said this, and I remember my own daughter when she was uh, maybe five-year-old or six-year-old, just started going to school a few years ago. And we would tell her, Beta, aise hota hai. she would say, no, 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 ma'am ne bola hai, aise hota hai. Which means that ma'am is above all. And we realized very soon that ma'am is a hero and uh, mm -hmm. sir or whoever is a hero. So we have to understand that teachers influence kids' personalities and parents' personalities also like that. So how we conduct ourselves with emotional intelligence is what really matters. So at this point, I haven't seen the clock yet, but it is uh, time probably to turn over to Atul for a few ideas of his. And Atul is a very experienced individual having worked in multinationals, having come to teaching a few years ago and working with a lot of people of different uh, backgrounds. So Atul, please add your thoughts and then we'll probably talk about a brilliant student from Shulini Aman. Look forward. Thank you, Vivek. I think this concept of teachers as heroes uh, I think completely resonates with me. Uh, Ma'am, you spoke about crying. Uh, I can tell you, uh, there's a movie called Hindi Medium. I'm not sure whether you guys have seen it, but when I saw the movie Hindi Medium, I actually cried and I cried for a reason. Uh, quickly, my story, I couldn't speak a word of English when I went to IIT Kanpur. When I started uh, at McKinsey and I somehow got in, I was told by my CEO after two months that I have to leave. I was fired basically because I could not speak English properly. I think I had a bit of a fire in the belly and I went back to him saying, give me a chance. And he did. I was lucky. I spent the next seven years Vivek speaking to a camera every day and I made it. And the reason I'm bringing this example is because uh, through compassion, through creativity, through inspiration, and through friends like you, Vivek, and Vandana Ma'am, who can put their head on, the hand on someone's head, a child's head, they can become overachievers, they can become world beaters. And I think that's the role of teachers, and, and teachers are true heroes in that context. Uh, I've led teams where there were guys from Howard, and there were people from, you know, all, uh, uh, the so-called uh, schools, uh, Dune or whatever, where I was sort of leading them and I was the uh, uh, the head. And, you know, when I saw that movie, you know, I, I said, yes, you know, I could do it. And that's my passion. If I could do it, I think every kid around the world can do it too. Just needs the right guidance. So you guys are all heroes. We're all heroes. So the two concepts I'd like to bring in, Vivek, uh, because they're so important. And ma'am, uh, did such a beautiful job explaining how uh, Maslow's theory and uh, I'll be preaching to a Pope, I think, right now, if I speak too much on Maslow's theory. Uh, but I think uh, the two words which are critical to me are first is creativity and the second is inspiration. I sometimes joke with my teachers, telling them that as teachers, we are in the business of inspiration. Uh, if a student gets a spark, uh, you know, fire in the belly, then they'll just change the world. And that can happen. It can happen anyway. For me, it happened uh, by a lecture by Arun Shauri Vivek. I was at ID Kanpur. I was completely lost. I was a five-point someone, if you've read the book, or a three-idiot type, six-pointer guy, almost jumped from the balcony. Uh, and then there was a lecture, beautiful lecture by Arun Shauri, and he changed my life, uh, honestly. Uh, he spoke about quality and what a brilliant lecture it was. And one of the reasons, actually, we do so many webinars, Vivek, is also that if out of uh, these... 30, 40,000 people that we touch, even if 100 of them get inspired, then the purpose is met. So that inspiration, I think, word is what I'd like to leave, and the second is creativity. So we have to give the environment to our students, our teachers, and others. And you spoke about parents and grandparents, ma'am, uh, to be fearless in creativity, to be wild in the way they think, to just go crazy in terms of ideas. And I think once that starts happening, you'll see that they'll be happier, 
they'll be doing things that they love to do but then also become world beaters professionally in the classical sense of success uh i think in the context of this i'd like to bring vivek if you allow me a video of uh, a very amazing work that aman has done uh, aman is a student of shulani she's doing a phd a btech and masters student from shulani but a tough student to handle a difficult student as we call it in our words comes from a lesser privileged family in punjab didn't know how to handle her till she took admission in phd so magic happened vivek and the magic happened because of three things according to me one is she got a wonderful guide to guide her into an amazing project that she loved to do which was on water and i'll speak about that in a second she collaborated with some of the best people in the world and she got inspired and magic happened uh, she has discovered a biomolecule which when added to water kills bacterial activity by 99.9% which basically means that she could change possibly she is sitting on a discovery that could change the way people drink water she has been awarded a un award uh, uh, to visit geneva it's called the young waters fellow she spent 4 months in geneva she won this out of 100000 researchers across the world who applied she's come back now and she's won a 25 lakh award from tata trust and lockheed corporation vivek so amazing story and who knows you know if her discovery is real and if you can really scale it up who knows one day she might win the nobel prize and it's an amazing story i'm going to play a video and you'll just understand the context every time i see it i get goose pimples hopefully so do you so one second for me for the video this is the power of eq you can get extraordinary work done out of people and they can be extraordinarily happy i'm delighted to state over here that as we speak uh, shulani is the highest patent filer in the country uh, we uh, we filed around 210 patents last year our students filed compared to 147 of id chennai which is the second highest in the country The Shulani students are not the best in the classical sense compared to IIT Chennai or IIT Bombay or IIT Kanpur, whichever IIT you look at. Uh, naturally, IITs get the first preference in terms of the classical marks. Uh, we also are not that large compared to IIT. We are probably twenty percent the size of an IIT, but still, magic happened, and I think it happened from inspiration and EQ. So I'll leave with that and hand it over to you, Vivek, and I'll come back at the end. thank you atul uh, in fact uh, inspiration is something i was going to talk about and uh, also shunning negativity is something i'm going to talk about and of course creativity so an emotionally intelligent person as we were talking uh, also uh, shuns negativity in the sense that uh, when you have to encourage someone then you are uh, effusive you go on encouraging uh, to the fullest extent 
when you have to snub someone or just uh, tell them that they are doing the wrong thing, snubbing them in a manner that uh, leaves a wound in the heart is not required. Uh, you can control your team or you can be firm with your team in a manner that is firm but not overdoing it. And any teacher who is dealing with parents also has to retain that calmness. And that calmness is something which is a great, great quality to have. A calm uh, person who is resolute, who is basically determined, uh, dynamic also, and is solid, not to be taken lightly, but is not someone who goes on throwing uh, his weight around, her weight around, goes on uh, shouting at people. So that is not something that is going to really help. And I always say that respect is more important than authority. So authority comes from your power, from your chair, from your position. And respect comes from the heart. If the team is working with their heart uh, and mind and soul into the project or the work or the teaching part or whatever it is, then that is something that is really going to work. And the students for uh, the same way. If the students really are fond of their school and uh, their teachers, and instead of zabardasti kind of situations, they will really do much better because they love the, what they're doing, they love the atmosphere, they love the classroom atmosphere and the activities, etc. And shunning negativity also means that even in a scary time like uh, we are in, you are not the one who is the most terrified. And you are the one who's, uh, okay, things are bad, we need to worry, but not overdoing it. Not watching the TV news too much, not discussing things which are going wrong, coming up with hopeful ideas and stories, uh, you can do that. You can be the agent of change. And in a society which is often uh, beset with negative uh, conversation, even in the morning walk at times, you notice people in the park. They'll start off with Modi and this and that and whatever. And there's no need to discuss politics early morning at 6 a.m. or 6.30. I don't think so, personally. So politics will always bring out the worst in us. And uh, we can discuss sports and music and art and literature and books and uh, Vanna ma'am rightly said Maslow's hierarchy so we are going up the self-actualization pyramid why should we be going down uh, and this lockdown also should bring out the positivity in us rather than the negativity ye dekho log follow nahi kar rahe norms ye dekho ye kya kar rahe wo kya kar rahe why should we be talking like that that means we lack emotional intelligence I'm sorry to say very bluntly so we need to talk about things which uplift the morale of our colleagues, students, family, friends. And things which are uh, like that will actually elevate us uh, from being a very dull and negative kind of person to a highly positive person. Of course, you are human. Sometimes you can feel low. Sometimes you can feel angry also. But anger management uh, is something you need to work on. And uh, the next point is creativity. Creativity actually helps you to handle your emotions better, to, to shun your uh, low points and your negative and angry moments a little better. So you are able to handle your life a little better if you are into something like music, photography, writing, art, uh, sports, whatever is your uh, creative pursuit. And also if you love your work and are creative at your work, the way you teach a subject, Supposing a teacher is teaching the same uh, topic every year, and that will happen, obviously, let's say geography or let's say history. The, uh, geography and history don't change very easily, right? History will never change. So the same things will be taught and the students will change. But if that teacher can somehow challenge herself or himself to bring out a new element in his own skill or having read a story about Akbar or uh, Gandhiji, which was not there in the earlier lecture that she delivered about that topic, then you are basically making your own existence more cheerful, more creative, and your communication skills come into play, your personality comes into play. So you are basically being creative about your own uh, work. And that is something which will help you as well. Emotional intelligence also means empathizing. That means that you are noticing others, you are caring for others, you are realizing that this colleague of mine today is looking a little off color, sad, depressed, morose, what has happened to her or him, unless you are noticing others and looking 
to care for others you will not even realize that you will be in your own computer and your own work and your own existence and your own whatever so you will be not really caring for others going out of the way uh, people who are into donation and charity are also doing a great job but i also feel that uh, we could also be part of a social sector initiative by empathizing for the poor for the illiterate teaching others planting trees uh, going and spending our time on a sunday uh, with society i find a lot of young people doing that these days and that's very heartening my own daughters have uh, really taken up this kind of thing and they have taught us parents a few things about empathy and you know thinking of society so emotional intelligence to put it all together is basically about understanding situations understanding that people are from different backgrounds understanding your own personality and where your weak points lie introspection will take you to a situation where you understand that in such situations i often get irritated and i often start uh, behaving in a manner which i don't want to actually behave like and then i say things which i shouldn't have said with your spouse with your family with your teacher colleagues with your students with parents or whoever you meet in the bus or on the taxi stand or wherever you are so the point is that we have to understand our own uh, frailties weaknesses drawbacks shortcomings and sit down and analyze how we can uh, work on our own self and uh, one tip that i'll give you which atul may also mention later is meditation meditation will absolutely elevate your emotional intelligence your calmness your balance of mind and those who meditate actually really realize that uh, life is uh, much uh, better than we think it is because we haven't meditated we don't realize that our mind is overworked overthinking is not something that is a friend overthinking means we worry to bits we we go on uh, mulling over one thing repeatedly again and again and again so it's not good to do that and i'll end with a story before atul comes back with uh, some points and he'll come back to the wonderful uh, video so uh, one story i'd like to tell you is that uh, there was a saint who came uh, and sat near a village and started meditating long hours every day he would be sitting in meditation the villagers used to go and pranam and meet him and they were very happy that a saint has come near a village and sitting outside and uh, they would be very pious but one man was a little ambitious he went to the saint and said sir i have heard you have a very expensive diamond with you and i want that diamond so the saint was uh, quite surprised that this man knows about the diamond he had a diamond he takes out the diamond and gives it to the man he say yeah you can take it so the man goes home and is totally uh, uh, befuddled at see he doesn't understand his own uh, luck he can't understand why and how the saint gave him the diamond he realizes it's very expensive gets it tested somewhere whatever his whole fortune is all everything could be changed for him with that diamond but a week later he comes back to the saint and says sir i don't want your diamond please take it back so he says the saint says why uh, isn't it valuable he said no sir it's very valuable but i can't sleep at night because i can't understand why you gave it to me and therefore i want you to give me that which made you give me this diamond what is it that made you give me this diamond that is more important than the diamond so uh, when i heard this talk from swami ji one uh, monk who was speaking in the yogoda satsang society which i follow he said when you have 20 rupees only then you can give 10 rupees that means the saint has something which is more expensive than the diamond which is probably large heartedness inner peace the value of what is really important and what is not that important so if we realize these things we may not be superhuman but we can improve our uh, realization and meditation is something which will definitely help us over to you atul please add your thoughts and then we can take some questions after the video vivek i've heard this story now 20 times or more but i still get goose pimples when i hear this story so true i think before i get into uh, the video there were two thoughts i had i think you brought in the concept of respect uh, respecting uh, respecting your colleagues and also getting respect uh, i remember uh, 
this was many many years ago and i used to be i just started working i was 20 all of 25 and i was working with uh, uh, mr ratan tata he was my client at that point of time and i ended up spending quite a bit of time with uh, ratan as we used to call him so he gave me a beautiful advice he said atul if someone tells you you're nice that's not take it as a negative statement you need to be respected not liked uh, which basically means he was saying is that of course you need to be respected and liked but if people like you because you're seen as a spineless guy who goes out and just doing anything and everything for anyone that's not the trait you need to have to be a, a great professional so respect comes from being fair respect comes from uh, always being fearless in uh, in your thoughts, not mincing your words, calling a spade a spade, and uh, not sort of you know brushing it under the carpet. So that's I think one thought I'd leave with all of you because EQ is not just about everyone saying this guy is very nice and uh, oh we love him because in a professional environment you also have to get work done. So if you are loved by your students and they respect you, that's the best, of course but being respected is also very important. I think the second thing is about optimism, which you brought about Vivek. Uh, I mean, nothing is superior than optimism and uh, always thinking of the positive. So there's a very famous movie by Shah Rukh Khan, uh, uh, which, and there's a very famous dialogue, which I'll repeat. Itni shiddat se tumhe paane ki koshish ki hai, ki har zarre ne hume milane ki saazish ki hai. So I think that's so true. Uh, uh, keep on thinking positive. Th keep on thinking about about what you can do. The weakest of students can do amazing things. We all know that. I was listening to a uh, a Veer Das. Veer Das is a great comedian. I was listening to one of his sessions on Netflix. And uh, please do that. I loved it. And he was talking about his story. He's dyslexic. And he said that, look, my teachers shunted me out. I could. I got 52% marks in English because I could not write uh, normal words. I wrote in capital letters because I just couldn't write. And the irony is that uh, 15 years later, my university in the US has given me an honorary doctorate degree. <laughs> and for someone who got, in English, right? For someone who scored 52% marks in his uh, 10th, uh, he, he got an honorary degree. And I think that's what uh, you know, that's what empathy is all about, that we understand the skills of our colleagues, our students, and make them world beaters because everyone is super special in something or the other. I think uh, that's my passion, Vivek. Like, uh, I work, I always say, uh, the whole reason why we started Shulini was to work with students from smaller towns. Uh, I have a very simple story. When I was in my 12th and I wanted to get into IIT, Pretty much everyone laughed at me. They said, you can't. Uh, I made it. I was the first student ever from Himachal to clear the JE, uh, which I'm still very, very proud of. And I think every student from smaller towns, smaller places can do it. And that's the beauty of online education. It's democratizing learning increasingly. Uh, whatever I've heard about the Tribune School, I think you have the same passion to make young Indians great. And that's the passion of Shulini. I'm going to play a small video over here and then we'll come back into the discussion, Vivek. Throughout history, the young have always been the ones. shape the future.
trees, pick your stars at. Our best bet to conquer the future. So what are you waiting for? Your time to dream is now. Dream of the research that can change the world. Dream of a high-flying corporate career. Dream of higher studies in the world's best universities. Dream of developing cutting-edge technology of the future. Dream of your own global star. Shuri University, we empower you and enable you to chase your dreams. success over to you vivek thank you atul uh, in fact uh, great ideas and shulini university i must tell you uh, vanda ma'am and teachers i am a visiting professor i go there often but the point is that uh, the focus on uh, research and innovation and creativity is what really excites me and the campus is uh, lush green and beautiful with flowers and we're really missing going to the campus with this lockdown uh, atul lives on the campus so he's a lucky man and we we would uh, i would uh, invite all of you on behalf of atul to visit the campus after the lockdown uh, but uh, questions and answers i believe uh, atul now we can absolutely take... lots of lots and lots of them i think uh, one of yeah. the uh, one of the most interactive session so far so thank yes. you everyone just shows the quality I... of the school Yeah. I think the first one is from Ruchika. Of course, there are lots of thank yous. Uh, 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 Ruchika, ma'am, is asking: Can emotional intelligence be taught? Yeah, so emotional intelligence can be taught, but it cannot be uh, uh, learned. So if I say that, it means that you can instruct someone. Like I have uh, talked about emotional intelligence. You have uh, probably uh, understood a few points, but you have to imbibe it. you have to practice it you have to ingrain it so something that uh, is going to be a part of your life it's not something that you will remember intellectually it has to be uh, within you and that's why i said that uh, i have a book actually called finding success within and if you permit i'll just show you the book uh, this is the cover of the book it's called finding success within just brought it out in march and it is a book of 52 life skills for young people and uh, there i talk about this fact that uh, you have to be uh, not only uh, learning about things but actually practicing them and emotional intelligence has to be practiced uh, should i uh, i think at this stage i'd like to introduce a framework called the myer briggs type indicator which some of you might be aware basically uh, myer briggs says that there are four traits along which uh, different people behave uh the traits are you can either be extrovert introvert uh you can be uh, uh data driven or intuitive you could be feelings driven or you could be logical in your thinking or you could be organized or disorganized and we all have some shades of each of these i think the trick or the easy way uh, to do eq the way at least i practice we wake in our professional life at least is to understand the other person's behavioral style for example if i am extremely unorganized which i am and by the way my wife is extremely organized so if you have to go on a vacation she'll plan 3 months in advance and i cannot even plan an hour in advance you know i am the sort of guy who'll say let's take the key and let's go and i'm not talking about the car key i'm saying let's go to europe okay let's pick up a passport and go i can take a decision in 2 hours and she needs 3 months to decide and plan and imagine the conflict that can happen so i have to push myself uh, to decide three month oh well month in advance if not three months and uh, and uh, and i think that's so once you understand these three skills if you put an extrovert in a in an introverted situation you say okay now you're alone that guy will be completely uh, uncomfortable so i think the onus is on us to empathize and be on the shoes of the other party and i think once we can do that uh you know we can actually become great friends great colleagues and great get great work done especially in a team environment because in a team environment they're so different we are all so different and 
if we don't understand each other's behavioral traits we can actually end up in a failure of the team so so i'll request some point of time you can even come and do a webinar if you want but it's a long topic but mbti is the thing you can even get yourself tested on your indicator type uh, what you are we all have shades of different traits but it's an important tool to think about eq sorry vivek i took a little more no time, no no it's important please. we have a question where uh, how do we manage things when the kids are at home in such a stressful time that's a very common complaint nowadays the kids are home the husband is home and uh, there was a whatsapp which said that uh, prime minister please tell us when will the maid come when will we have pani puri and when will my husband go back to work so this is these are the main things that the lady wants to know and uh, the lady also will probably go back to work the kids are going to be um, you know the, their energies are what uh, we, we need to kind of understand the kids being locked up is more difficult for them so they need to have a physical activity time even in uh, at home i feel that if they can play some sport for one hour anywhere in the little space that is available uh, whatever it is exercise and sport that will keep them a little less stressed out and dolphins are released and uh, they go to sleep on time if they are physically even at uh, non lockdown times i always say children or students who are outdoor sports persons they will have better uh, control over their social media time also they will go to bed on time and uh, their physical and mental development will be better so i think you need to keep them energetically occupied in terms of physical activity and reading books uh, which you can give them a target you can give them incentive if they are very small kids then maybe some uh, you know some uh, little stars will do i remember uh, somebody who used to wet her bed and uh, the parents used to give a star the day she didn't wet her bed so the star used to encourage her and she got, got out of that habit so this is something that uh, you can also adopt with your kids encouraging them and i'll quickly go to the next one childhood is, is the foundation of a personal uh, childhood is the foundation of a person's personality how do we inculcate empathy among the uh, students so it is by your example ma'am uh, you will have to do it uh, kaveri ma'am is asking earlier question was chandni ma'am so kaveri ma'am you will have to show it by your own example and how you conduct yourself they will be inspired by that and maybe you can tell them stories of empathy also in the class if you have a subject which goes with stories even a maths teacher can tell stories in at times no harm so there are stories which give you inspiration i think that will help you help them atul ji is asking a more complicated question musical uh, vocalist she, he is a musician vocalist very nice atul i want to know how do we deal with multiple emotions since sometimes it becomes really tough to deal with our own emotions yeah that's the whole battle uh, dealing with others emotions is not in our hands we can actually be examples for them but we can't really change them so parvansa yogananda whom i follow he said uh, change yourself to change others so you have to work on your own self and meditation will help you to control your emotions you will find yourself to be less irritable less uh, angry less restless calmness is something you need to adopt so yogananda ji said uh, be calmly active and actively calm this is a quote which is uh, kind of elixir or motto for life if you look at this book uh, which i have here autobiography of a yogi many of you have read it or seen it in india most people know about it this is a book which contains such inspiration read books atul they will help you to understand yourself a little better and uh, control your emotions meditation and reading i know you're hinting at me also when you said atul read Am books. I? <laughs> i will i i will vivek i promise you <laughs> i was saying atul dubey but <laughs> it's up to you to I understand know. what you can read <laughs> i definitely need to start reading more than i nikita ma'am is asking a question if a person is emotionally unstable or maybe has simple symptoms of borderline personality disorder not ready to understand the need of becoming stable and believes himself to be the best shall self evaluation scales help uh, will it be sense help to sensitize the person uh, you see this could be a case where you need professional help yes um, and yes atul mentioned uh, an mbti scale but then uh, diagnosis is only part of the battle one you've understood the person's requirements now you have to uh, help that person get into 
first of all agree to be part of a program which will help him or her and then you need to gradually win the battle so a person who needs medical help or psychological help will have to take professional help but your example and the company will definitely matter if the company is positive and the company is uh, you know uh, cheerful that will help this person a lot so i'll just like to add over here vivek i've been through a couple of uh, very tough situations on this uh please immediately seek uh, counselor slash psychiatric help because it's a very slippery slope with these type of patients and uh, you know the normal tendency is to say you know counsel them as friends be happy or you know how can you think like this and you might think that helps but it might not always help so professional help is very very needed because if they go into a situation which is way worse then bringing them back can be very very difficult so so the, if you think there is a borderline convince them to take professional help strongly strongly encourage you from my experience absolutely absolutely uh, ashi ma'am is asking in order to change someone's attitude towards life what qualities do you think the agent should possess so obviously you have to uh, be an example to them and especially if they're younger to you they will look up to you hopefully and uh, if you want to change the attitude towards life then keep on repeating things which are cheerful affirmations also help you know affirmations are great uh, uh, enablers if you read a sentence which inspires you a spiritual statement or a inspirational uh, line like uh, again i'll quote yogananda ji he says i will stand unshaken amid the crash of breaking worlds now nothing could inspire more the world is crashing about you but you will stand unshaken and he says go on repeating these things to yourself and go on repeating them to others and uh, fantastic uh, results can come tarun preet ma'am is saying uh, i think it's ma'am i hope it's ma'am tarun preet ma'am is saying uh, creating a balance is most needed how can we establish a balance yes yeah, so the balance is basically that you realize your human uh, frailties but you basically uh, you work on your uh, positives and uh, i follow the 80 20 rule in life uh, quite often so if you are uh, most of the time 80% of the time you are uh, cheerful positive balanced calm and rest of the time you are a little slipping try and make it 90 10 if you can that will be even better <laughs> we got lots of so, them atul uh, in the uh, the couple of them on the uh, chat, chat side so i'm going to pick up uh, ashish yeah, i, pick I up think up. we can pick up a couple of them and then we can uh, uh, try to sort of close yeah. i have a few questions from you you know my cheeky ones right yeah sure so so, um, so ashish sir is asking how do we do meditation i think uh, that's a great one for you vivek all right how do we do meditation so i follow the kriya yoga path of yogananda ji and uh, the book was written in 1940s and the lessons are available today we follow a regular practice of meditation morning and evening my wife and i uh, even in the morning today i meditated for one hour before coming here so that helps every morning and uh, you have to basically follow meditation techniques i'll write down the name of a website i'll write down a website here which will probably help you to understand the techniques better this is the website that i follow you can find anything that you feel is appropriate for you it could be any path but some structured path has to be followed for meditation you can't just sit there and think that you know i will uh, uh, start meditating your thoughts will trouble you and thoughts will trouble you even if you use techniques but uh, you have to keep on trying don't give up after 2 weeks most people give up after one or two weeks oh i can't meditate my thoughts trouble me so that is normal you have to meditate for 20 years then you'll see some results it's not an easy so vivek thing. we uh, we can send vandana ma'am uh, 11 uh, wednesday we have a session on how to meditate so if the teachers want to join us we could absolutely send a link to, fact, to uh, absolutely atul khosla is uh, running through shulini university is running a yogananda guru series on wednesday at 11:30 am there is a special guided meditation session and uh, yes atul we must send the details please join us all of you yeah i'll take a couple more questions yeah i think we'll have to max take two more yeah so uh, can expressing emotions through writing help one's health very good point uh, harkirat uh, ma'am i think 
so Harkirat ma'am, uh, it is actually true that writing is a therapy. And when you write down your uh, negative emotions as well as your positive thoughts, you are actually expressing yourself and making yourself feel better. Especially if you write down your fears and worries, you can turn, you can burn the paper or delete the whatever, wherever you've written it later. Don't share it with others. Just express yourself through writing. It is a therapy. In fact, my daughter, the younger one, Kavya, is into art therapy. So art therapy, music therapy, writing therapy, sports therapy, I believe, is also one way. So please get into something which helps you to, uh, yes, express your emotions. Then they can be unbottled. So to say. I, I have a very simple tip over here, Vivek. Uh, sure. I spent four years in Switzerland and I had a very tough first six months. Uh, I was struggling uh, in my job over there. We were setting up a company. And uh, one of my very dear friends uh, advised me, he said, uh, what do you do for ironing your shirts? I said, I give it to the laundry. He said, okay, every day in the morning, just iron your shirt. Uh, don't give it to the laundry. And I started doing that. So that 20 minutes was actually so amazing. I wasn't meditating in those days, but that 20 minutes of just ironing the shirt cluttered, decluttered my mind. So uh, sometimes even mundane things like washing plates, cooking, or you know, uh, laundry and stuff like that can be amazingly helpful. And you can save some money also. At least in Switzerland, it was $4 a shirt, right? So. Absolutely. I think uh, most of the questions are relating to, uh, the rest of them are relating to children. So uh, they are uh, about how to make uh, children emotionally stronger, emotionally balanced, and uh, yourself also. Um, how to help a person when you are when your dear one is emotionally imbalanced? Uh, yeah. So basically, you have to be patient. If we start reacting to someone who is uh, going to shout at us, then it becomes a slanging match. Things worsen. You have to be the shock absorber and uh, try and help such a person by being. Calm. See, being calm is not easy. But uh, you see someone like Rahul Dravid batting for the whole day or the next day also in the wall. So be like the wall and be absolutely balanced and calm if you can. And that person will definitely improve. Uh, Atul, I think we've run out of time. Maybe the rest of the questions can be mailed to us and we can get back to them on uh, email. Absolutely. I have... Uh, oh, Three questions from my side. Rapid fire, Vivek. Your favorite book? My favorite book is lying right here. I Autobiography of a Yogi. I uh, recommend it to everyone who hasn't read it. If you have read it once, please read it again. Because when you read it at the age of 20 or 40, it makes a difference. Uh, you change. You evolve. So read it again. And my second favorite book is Finding Success Within, which is my book. <laughs> I was about to ask you, you know, why not your own book? But you answered. Uh, when did you start meditating, Vivek? Seriously. I started at the age of 40. And uh, that was 13 years ago. So you know my age now. So uh, that was when I was uh, doing uh, little bits of uh, reading about uh, spirituality. My wife was already meditating for the last three years before that. So I used to ask her, how can you sit for so long? What do you do? I used to go and drop her. She said, come for five minutes. In that meditation center we have in sector 28 in Chandigarh, uh, Yogoda Satsang Dhyan Kendra. So we used to just go. Now we go regularly and I practice Kriya Yoga every day. So one sentence that you have to tell everyone uh, to finish. So and I'm going just, to. You uh, only got one sentence, okay? Yeah, I got one sentence. So I'll uh, say that work on three things calmness, uh, compassion, and communication. Fantastic. Over to you, Vandana, ma'am, for closing the session. Well, it's been a wonderful morning with many questions which have been answered beautifully from experience. And there was a lot to learn. Very bright, very cheerful, and what an inspirational morning. Something that we look forward to, especially these days. And uh, Shulini University, you seem to be doing a great job addressing creativity in children and taking the children from smaller town, towns I mean, when they look at you, Atul, they can think of McKinsey, they can think of IIT, you've been speaking about your trips to Switzerland. So they have a role model to follow. You're doing a great job. Thank you very much for this morning that you've spent with us. It's going to go a long way with us. There are many questions unanswered, but we are definitely going to be sharing on the email with you. Thank you, Vivek, for the deep insight, which again is coming from your own experience. And... Uh, 
stay safe and stay healthy. That's what I have to say to everyone present here. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, it's an honor for us. And uh, I, could, I can tell you that this was one of the best sessions. I've, I've really enjoyed it because somehow the energy flowed into us. I think, Vivek, you'll also agree with me. Totally Absolutely, ma'am. I, I, totally and it's, I mean, you've got a beautiful set of teachers. I mean, look at the questions, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. We've been yeah, in sessions been where it's all quite... Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We'd love to, love to, you know, invite all of you over once uh, Corona is over, over to our campus, come and spend a couple of days with us. We, we actually have a small village, which we call the Yogananda Ville, inspired from Auroville. Uh, we've got a bunch of huts over there. So come and spend time with us and uh, let's have some fun together. So look forward to meeting with you, all of you, and uh, hopefully we'll e-meet again very yes, soon. Sir. Thank I'm you. I'm waiting for the invitation. We'll be there once the lockdown is. Absolutely. There is, there is no alternative, as they call it, the Tina effect, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Vivek, for being such a wonderful Thank person. you so much. Thank you.